Welcome everybody. So this is the Tuesday, August 15 meeting of the development team. Uh, where's my camera here? I'm going to see if I get my camera. Okay, that's that's better. That's better. Okay, well, welcome everybody. So we had a big weekend this weekend with the build of the 3D printers. You can look in a work document how that, that looks like. So if anyone else joins, please uh, send this send this over to him. Yes, um, Ahmad, your speech, you cannot hear us here. I'm speaking here. Can everybody hear me? I can. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, people, so so please look at the the screen on the Hangout. I'm going to share my screen. Looks like we have a new person on the team here. We got Michelle joining us. So, Michelle, I'm going to introduce you. So, Michelle is um he was on a team for designing the 3D printer very much initially at the beginning. Uh, so the axis, the universal axis, that's pretty much he rendered that out when we did that last year and then he kind of had to drop off for a little bit of time because of, some of financial pressure. But um, welcome back and we look forward to it. So so Michel actually is well well versed in the WebGL aspects which we touched upon in the other, other meeting. So we're going to look to add the WebGL 3D 3D embeddable manipulable images into all the work that we do so we really want to develop that tool chain so that we can present our stuff even better just like you saw on the axis already so um, but to begin with here look at our um, I'll start here with in a document with our numbers and efforts so look at that definitely uh, constant upward motion here uh, this week was actually a record, like 240 developer hours. A lot of that comes from the fact that, so, Emmanuel is here working full-time on the CNC torch table, and Joseph and Dixon were at the build last week, so they put in a bunch of hours here, which counts as direct development hours, so that's pretty good. But if you look at that, though, if, if there's a gap between... Um, so if you if you see my screen, if there's a gap between the red line and the blue line, that means that uh, fewer people are are pulling in a heroic effort. So for example, if we got 240 hours in red, that's the scale. That's hours divided by 10, and we have like seven or eight developers. That means uh, on average each of those people put in like 30 hours. So the the lines actually should be close to one another. And whenever the blue line is below the red, that means that fewer people are pulling in more hours. But they should be equal because on average, um, if you divide the number of hours by 10, that should be the number of development hours by 10. That should equal the number of developers if everyone is, is pulling their 10 hours per week. Uh, right now we have 19 active devs. So by all means, uh, people haven't logged this week, so please keep logging. And 26 active wiki editors, if you look at the wiki, we've got 26. But the good thing, I mean, that's not a huge number, but it's decent. And most of them are actually core development contributions. So as opposed to like kind of random, pretty much random contributions to the wiki, they are mostly probably like four-fifths of that is quite quite the core OSC development effort. So that's that's pretty good. I think that kind of summarizes the the efforts graph we look forward to adding so Michel actually he's kind of joining us today but officially you gotta still do your your FreeCAD exam I know you know FreeCAD but we got to go through the motions and show your product show your results so that uh, you can get a score and a badge for for OSC CAD okay so let's talk about the results from the week product demos and then we'll get into the timeline and then work allocation so product oh yeah and by the way so so we're gonna have the meeting on a tractor tomorrow so as we said 1 p.m. tomorrow is our regular tractor meeting 
Uh, so we're kind of dividing this day as just the general meeting and tomorrow we're going to focus on the tractor, just getting into the, the serious development on that. Um, okay, next design, okay, ignore that, That's this is, um, okay, let's look at slide number two here. Um, so I'll just go continue with the, no, this is, what is this? Next, I'm confusing the slide next 3d printer so Emmanuel is here and we decided so so he really wanted one a workshop out in Maine so uh, we have confirmed tentatively that September 30 would be the next event in Maine and we're gonna go bigger and better so we're looking at doing 12 inch and 24 inch frames with a nichrome wire heated bed and external bed heater at 120 AC so we're gonna really upgrade the the size and the extruders so we'd like to do a filament extruder that is three millimeters and based on a Lulzbot 3d printer so we ran into the so out of the workshop I mean it was good uh, page number four five and six, five we can see the video um, that was the six foot printer that we built we built 12 other ones that were the regular 16 inch size very nice stuff we're all happy the event went pretty well we got killed on one part and that was the print quality of the parts which was um, where the magnet holes are because the the current D3 does not have a cooling fan on the nozzle a lot of those holes because they're printed upside down they sagged and effectively they were not holes because the metal the material sagged on the top so 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 we couldn't locate the magnet so we probably wasted like two hours in the workshop that means we ran late into the night uh, so that was one mistake uh, that definitely needs to be improved and the second one was um, when we did the motor pieces the only the tiny screws to attach the motor were attached so then we had to remove all of that and then attach the regular six millimeter screws because th those weren't put in and I, I just missed that but outside of those two two mistakes it was perfect like all the parts were made like late at night when we finally finished all the parts to assemble it, it was just one part after another just snaps in it was really nice uh, so that was good but a lot of people actually did complain about the magnets uh, so we're gonna yeah either fix that issue or do otherwise like like you see the PVC frame here so this is what we prototyped just yesterday and actually uh, Ellie here he's here he, we're gonna just assemble the full D3D around the PVC frame so this works really well it's, look at that it's quite attractive very easy I mean the corners you buy these were actually bought off the shelf but we can print them and uh, nice perfect clean looking frame and then what we could do is attach the axes by bolting through these members these vertical members so instead of magnetic attachment to the front we're gonna do the bolt nut catcher bolt on the end pieces attached to the frame and that's yeah this looks really promising like super easy way to do it and it eliminates the perhaps the hardest piece out of the the whole game which is the frame because right now we're getting the frame CNC cut and it's heavy while this you get you can buy the corner pieces off Amazon uh, this set that I got here was fifteen dollars for the eight corner pieces uh, so that's quite doable and we're gonna look at doing this kind of frame for the September 30 so to experiment because if I'm gonna be traveling there um, one we can it's it's easier to just bring the plastic pieces or just get them shipped there so it's just um, a good experiment to see how, how well that could work but I mean from the, the looks of it, it looks looks really nice so we like it but anyway the the main improvement for the, the next time around is so this um, three millimeter extruder so so two things about the three millimeter extruder there's one is that we want to have larger print volumes like the 24 inch frame so really getting to two by two feet and if we do two by two feet then we want a large extruder also capable of rubber so thermoplastic elastomer which can be printed and if we finish so so the second day of that workshop uh, just to mention is the second day is the build of the filament maker so that's going to be an experimental day right after the first day build of however many printers we build second day is experimental for filament maker now what's that mean so in practice if we have a two by two foot worked out two by two by two foot bed that's enough 
for a rubber track if we get the filament maker going and we we start printing or making our own rubber filament thermoplastic elastomer filament because the tracks I mean they'd be like you know maybe 10 10 pounds or so 10 20 pounds so if you think about that the the cost of that if you get the filament uh, pellets they're about a dollar a pound so a track would cost us twenty dollars which is like ridiculously cheap but it would be very expensive if we got filament at like twenty bucks a pound which in that case like each little track would be like four hundred dollars which is pretty that's pretty expensive that's cost prohibitive for doing a low cost design so we're moving right along this is looking really promising and using nichrome wire with uh, nichrome with just a sleeve of fiberglass uh, that would be the way to do the larger heated bed and just a very simple thing one eighth inch steel which is under a dollar a pound and that way the bed will will be about 20 pounds for the steel it's gonna have to be reinforced with some angle on the back but one eighth inch steel with a PEI surface so a high, high performance bed nichrome heated 24 inches on each side PVC frame and this will be awesome we're moving right along on that but definitely the print quality on the parts like uh, and besides like people were complaining about the magnets because they were they're hard to put in well this time they were especially hard because we couldn't just put them in and, and glue them in because uh, the holes didn't really happen um, and I didn't catch that before before the the workshop I, I thought it looked kind of good but parts were really crappy but I mean we got the printers built except that we spent a lot of time just wasted time on the on the magnet part so if we do the PVC frame the magnets are largely not there except for say for the the end stops and the tool head attachment so those would be the two places and uh, yeah that's that so yeah moving right along that would be the next 3d printer uh, I'll save this slide about next steps on so design sprint uh, I meant to do this this was supposed to be the design sprint slide. Uh, let's let's move this to the to afterwards. Okay, more product. So this is the current state of the. It's kind of how the CNC torch table looks like, but those are one inch axes. There's issues there. Uh, like the long axis is 12 feet. That's like four meters. That's that's a large large thing here. These are the one inch universal axes, driven by the small NEMA 17 motors they do very very well in fact one of the motors drives the axis at a reasonable speed and definitely fast enough more than fast like several factors faster than what we need to do for half inch steel cutting but that's our old CNC torch table bed which is a water bed actually with the slats and uh, the large axes but the, the the 12 foot axis is is heavy and it sags down a little bit and it's kind of hard to connect it to the end pieces so we're reworking that actually so uh, just getting the mechanical structure still refined before we do the the height control and the automatic gas shut off for a three hose oxyacetylene torch so that's what's happening here uh, progress is happening and Emmanuel is here until until Friday so moving along with that uh, on a CNC circuit your... yeah go ahead can hear you since when since since just now how much did you miss sorry how much did you miss like uh, a minute uh, a minute oh, okay okay so on a torch table just to summarize so it's looking good um, okay so torch table how did I mute get muted I don't know okay thanks for letting me know so on a torch table yeah finishing this up and um, we might uh, in the next iteration like the the one inch solid solid steel rods with one inch brass bushings inside the 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 printed pieces the this works it's very heavy we're looking at using hollow pipe next time and even this time around we might actually do like right now we have uh, three quarter inch just regular steel pipe which is empty hollow we might just replace that it's a similar size to one inch I think it's a little under one inch uh, so we might be able to use our same parts but yeah this is uh, we're, we're running into some issues on the mechanical still so we're resolving that 
Okay, CNC circuit mill. So Shane in the background is doing some tests on. Uh, he's he's uh, reported that he's got issues about the height control on the CNC circuit mill. Like see, you see here, the all these flakes mean that um, he, the height is not being. So he's milling, but the height it's just going too deep in some places. So there's some loss on the height. One issue that was identified was was uh, the rods might have been slipping. So he put some more material on. To, to, fir to firm up the rods within the, the and the whole 3D printed pieces. Uh, so working on that continuously. Okay, as far as the language agnostic instructionals, amazing work. This is great stuff. Uh, we used this, we showed this during the workshop. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is just amazing clarity. Uh, I mean, look at that. That's by Roberto. And Abe did the other one on the extruder. So I think it's extremely helpful and useful, and uh, I think we can do some more of these later. And I was going to check in on the people who were working on that. Uh, if you guys are finishing that up, uh, can, can I get some feedback? The people who are working on it, are you... Um, yeah, um, do you guys want to migrate to Jitsi like right now? Because... Uh, we can do that if you like, if we don't lose anybody. You want to try that? Yes, I, I think so. Okay, okay, everybody, let's let's just migrate over to Jitsi. Open jitsi.meet.jits.c. So here's the link. Okay, let's just try that. I'm over there. I migrated there right now, so see if you guys can make it. Um, yeah, okay, I see you guys moving over. Yeah, and I still have the other one open, so... Alright. No, no, it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's it was interesting. Sometimes the Jitsi was working worse. Right now it appears to be working better. That's good. Okay, so we'll mute everybody. Yeah, so I guess we can we can get out of the other other one. Okay, if you guys suggest, yeah, I mean, let's use Jitsi from now on. I mean, if uh, let's just try that next time and, and continue there. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, and if any one of you misses this, I mean, uh, this is getting recorded, so we got everything here. So that's pretty good here. Yeah, I mean, really neat stuff. Pictures worth a thousand words. I can't say more than that. And I think, uh, what's the general assessment of Roberto's procedures? Some feedback on that. Is that working well for people? Or uh, I, I think the instructions are pretty good. Uh, any comments on that? We'll save the comments for later. Okay, so continuing Power Cube. Um, so last week we did some work. Oh, I forget when that was. That was like a, over a week ago, a Saturday. Yeah, uh, but we'll continue with that. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of all the reports we've got here. So let's talk about um, the next main priority. So so right now, let's 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 look at the roadmap. So if we go to uh, D3 so roadmap page no it's called it's not called roadmap it's called critical path so on the critical path page we've got the D3D the main working team critical path on the dev team so I'll go into this one um, the dev team critical path let's just kind of see where we are with everything so circuit mill refinement that's happening um, what you see yeah let me shrink this up just a little bit uh, that link is, uh, let me put a link to, to slide number three, slide, duplicate, slide. Uh, so slide number three, if I erase that, there's a link there to the critical path that you can see. Uh, that's right there. And I'm going to... I'll put that 
image in this in the working document so there it is um, so let's just go, go through where we are in this this map so that August 12 is the 3d pr printer workshop yes that happened well um, the CB press is the next one coming up in two weeks uh, so this the workshops are moving right along and we have to extend this for the future ones where we have the um, the next main thing on, a, on the calendar is September 30 and because September 30 is going to be the next 3d printer We're looking at the tractor. We're just going to push it back two weeks So October 15 and we'll get that announcement up like as soon as we can here, but uh, since Emmanuel Wasn't able to do it any earlier than October uh, Sorry September 30 for the 3d printer We'll move the tractor and that's and the tractor is gonna be a big nice big event. We'll we'll go crazy on the build so um, that that's based on new power cubes and, and just refinement of all the different parts. If the 3D printing of the rubber tracks works, we, can, we are actually going to have 3D printed rubber. So that's amazing stuff. Uh, CNC torch table. Yeah, we're, um, we're not part cutting. We're, we're not there yet. So this, this part here, we're, we were supposed to be like by now doing part cutting. That hasn't happened. So, I mean, we got the steel cut. No, we sent it out for, for cutting by the fab shop. We're going to just continue working on a... CNC torch table as we and see what we can get developed by the end of this week we, we are hoping that the mechanical will be set and we can get some first cuts still by the end of this week and possibly get some parts started ne the week after but that leaves us only a week so we might get a few parts cut with our torch table uh, filament maker so the build so yeah this build is not happening August 7 so we're gonna move that to September 30 and before that Emmanuel is gonna try to test out some of the parts the design there and the sourcing is, appears to be pretty complete there might be some missing links on refining the sourcing to easier sources um, I'm not sure about that Abe um, Abe or Roberto can you fill us in on the status of the bill of materials work there any um, what was the latest there Okay, maybe not. Uh, it looks like we do have a little bit of work left, maybe on the... Uh, just refining the... We've got all the parts linked as, as parts for, for sourcing, but we want to refine some of the sourcing so that we have just like Amazon, McMaster Car, and eBay as like pretty much the three sources where you can get all the parts. We're not going to like 10 different suppliers. Uh, but we'll we'll get that going. Okay, just two more things I want to bring up today, and that is the OSE ISO. And I actually want to. So Christian, are you Christian? Are you on here? I'm not sure if you are, uh, but Christian is kind of doing the the server work uh, along with Michael, getting kind of firming up the server and and moving over the server to our new server. The thing that's um, that we really need to know once again came up during the workshop is the OSC Linux thing. Uh, we really need to standardize and uh, get everybody on the same page. Like for example, during the workshop, there were people with Macs that couldn't run. Like you know, conflicts. So this the same old, same old. Uh, if you don't have the identical operating system, you're going to get run into software issues. And we ran into that in a workshop, which prevented also some people from printing using their own printer, their own computers, therefore just wasted time. And the ISO gives us a great opportunity to, to combine that with actual teaching of software skills. Like some of the missing things that, that we have are like everybody using the same version of FreeCAD where everything works identically. So I'm going to ask Christian to go back to the OSE ISO. There's a page on the wiki called OSE ISO, but we need to firm that up and keep track of what's working for whom so that anybody has access to an external USB drive that they put that in their computer and it just works and it has all the OSE software. And that means also the 3D printing software. You got Cura and you have you have the Arduino environment so those should be all uniform and then moving on to other things like KiCad like 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 circuit design and all that we gotta put all the software like GIMP and Inkscape and so forth but 
yeah, we really need to go revisit that and maybe, Christian, if you watch this, I'll follow up with you on exactly what to do there. But someone has to manage that. Um, another person, Jay, was, um, uh, was never formally joined our team. Uh, he was kind of managing that, but that kind of, it seems like it fell by the wayside. So we need to revisit that and get everybody on the same page with respect to the software. So, for example, during workshops and anywhere else, we can always be sure that you now the question should be okay not like what version are you using the question should be maybe are you using the OSE ISO or OSE Linux so that there is no confusion like like what version and so forth because different versions like FreeCAD is definitely not at a final product stage yet it's it's constantly changing uh, other software is changing so we need to be on the same page so we'll revisit that as far as FreeCAD um, I know we are, um, so so I know that from what we have on the team, Emmanuel and Roberto have been quite excited about the the assembly capacity within FreeCAD, which changes our workflow a little bit. Like what we were doing to date was we were saving files, just importing them as merges. But it turns out that the assembly workbench has a really good workflow for that already, meaning that you when you in, import using the assembly workbench functionality you get a properly constrained machine like for example the brick press where where the individual supporting files are individual modules but they're imported through the workflow of assembly not merge okay so there's there's details in that um, and I don't know if Roberto, do you want to share some of the latest? I know I was talking to Emmanuel here. Do you want to share some of the latest insights about how you would see that working? Because I know you've um, played with that. Uh, do you want to comment on that? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, uh, with Emmanuel, uh, we were um, trying or talking about the assembly workflow and using the the assembly work the assembly two workbench yeah it's it's um, I, there, there's a lot of tools and options for the assembly in order to for example to edit um, each single part into the assembly yeah you if you use um, um, sub sub assemblies into the the master assembly EV press. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's it, it's really really cool. And the only difference I I I respect uh, to to our current workflow mm -hmm. is that uh, in the master um, we 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 are not going to see each individual part only the sub assembly uh -huh. right that's the main difference i i think in in, in terms of what what i what, right. what we see yeah and i thought about that part and that's the only missing link to that workflow because What's really nice is if you in the master assembly you can strip away parts that are sub assembly level, and in this what you're proposing right now you you we are doing it at the assembly level. So for example, if you want to examine the parts of the extruder, like yesterday we downloaded the the Lulzbot extruder file which they have in FreeCAD, and it was actually constrained as the assembly. So when you clicked on it, you couldn't get to the parts, the individual parts, and that would have been nice because we wanted to see the individual parts. So what's a way to address that issue? Can we do the can we do maybe like two file sets where one is the master assembly with with sub assemblies and then there's maybe another one is a master assembly with parts but still done through the the assembly workbench? Um it's possible just the the is the the workflow the difference because when we when we work you see, is we can distribute the work into different team members, so each each person work 
works in in just one sub assembly. But if we, if we want to use the assembly to water assembly, we should we should um, we should give the work the work to only one person because uh, it's just one person who who is going to to import each individual part into the master assembly. Okay. Yeah, but then what we what we can do perhaps. Um, so yeah, so say you have that, but maybe then we can do just it would require a little more work. But can we not then, like after we have the sub assembly, then we have a bunch of individual files for the parts of that assembly, and then we do another master file that consists of parts plus the final assembly so that means we would have to have two master files one is the master file of master assembly with sub assemblies and the other one is master file with just parts would that work you think yeah that yeah it's possible and also there's a, a way to to solve the problem of the work distribution maybe if we um, we make an agreement about um, um, for example one person works and the, the master assembly with um, individual parts then th that person save save his work, work and another person work in the same file and that way we could finish the, 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 the master assembly, but we, 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 we cannot work at the same time in the same file. That's the point. Well, would two files be then the answer? Two master files? Um, the, the, the problem is if, if, we, if we have the, the, the assemblies into different files, uh, in the the import um, the import tool in the assembly to workbench, on you can only import with um, with just one visible part. I don't know if you understand me. No, I I didn't get that one. The yeah, think, maybe. Think about one. Imagine uh, we have five parts into that so assembly yeah so if if I want to import that that part the master assembly uh, when I, I need uh, that only one of that parts uh, one of those parts um, is visible yeah right in the, in the because if, if there are more than one that more than than one part visible the, the import in the assembly to workbench is not going to work okay so tell you what um, I think we really need to do is do an instructional on this to show this new workflow and how do you think you can uh, could you see a solution right now for the the individual parts being uh, visible in the final assembly versus just the sub assemblies being visible in the final assembly, uh, can you can you see the solution? Yeah, I was I was thinking that uh, the GitHub uh, workflow is could be useful for that purpose because in, if we work on just one file, we can know if some people is working on that file already, so we can maybe work on the file and then left leave the file for the work and. For other people's work. Okay, we need to document this. We need to pretty much uh, get everybody on the same page on this because what we're talking about right now is actually the proper way to do CAD, as opposed to the very simple way which I was proposing before, which was just you merge individual files into a final document, which which misses some of the advanced functionality of of assembly constraints. So, 
can I get you to, um, yeah, maybe maybe as you're, since you're, you and Emmanuel are pretty top on that, can I get you to, to lead the effort of documenting the new workflow? Uh, do a little video on it. So start with a script and let's, let's go through and uh, approve the script like that we're all totally agreed on it and that it addresses the critical aspects of having individual parts visible versus just the sub-assemblies visible. Okay, and the question there is, why is it important to have the individual parts visible? Well, it's because I think there are at least two places. Like, one is explosions, like um, exploded part diagrams, even... Um, even maybe language agnostic instructionals, but certainly just reviewing the file for like when you're just examining, like say you're in a workshop and you want to see how everything comes together, you really need to be able to select part by part, not assembly by assembly. So I think there's a compelling, definitely a compelling reason why we need to have the ind individual part files, um, like the two, two kind of master head files. So right um and then the question becomes wh well why do we have why not go to just migrate to the one part where we use the assembly workbench with individual parts as opposed to assemblies is there a way to facilitate that the individual parts by the way we organize the part tree that we can get that assembly viewability within um if we have a master file with individual parts do you, do you kind of see that but I think, okay, I, I think this needs a little, just a little bit of head scratching on how exactly we go forward. But let's, uh, can I have you begin on, um, like, focus really on this aspect? Because if we get this this down for everybody, that will really improve the, how we can all work together in parallel on the, on the more complex projects. I think this is really critical at this point in the project. So, yeah, you think you can uh, work on that? Yeah, I mean there are different options. So Jose said, uh, Roberto, I I couldn't hear you. Are you still there? Can you can you take that on? It looks like Roberto's having connectivity issues, but um, yeah, we we really need to solve it. Jose's piping in that there's mux, there's sub assembly, there's other other stuff that we can work with. But yeah, we really gotta address the both the module level and the individual part level within the final master assembly so we uh we'll do that yeah so let's let's assume we're gonna work that out and and i'm gonna try to get roberto and definitely emmanuel to pipe in but yeah it's, it's i think it's about time for a nice decent video instruction on how to do that so we all learn from that including myself because i haven't been personally i haven't been working with the assembly features of assembly 2 um because i'm not smart enough yet and you guys are teaching me so okay so we're all in a group learning environment so it's good um let's teach each other so let's just move on here so that that addresses the free cad critical free cad question uh improving our workflows there the iso we really need to beef that up uh christian okay so let's let's talk about uh the, the process so uh, what's the next major priority? So we were working on a power cube that was, I think, the weekend um, Saturday, not this last Saturday, but the weekend before that. And I think we should continue on that. So that's looking good in terms of a much simplified power cube. And we're going to build the power cube in uh, during the the build in two weeks. So I think we can return back to that. As far as the CB press, what we've done is uh, pretty much updated a lot of the parts. I think we'll get a manual to do the final assembly possibly waiting to get the results of Roberto as far as how what's the agreement is on what kind of uh, MasterCAD files we should have available uh, but we're working on it. We're, we're in good shape on the brick press and then the power cube we, we're redesigning for more simplicity there so we can continue on that and I would propose that um, this weekend we focus on that so I would propose the the design sprint noon time to four on at least the power cube uh, continuing what we've been doing before to make sure that's all that's all good 
so I'm gonna go to slide number yeah design sprints I'm gonna pr uh, press this up in uh, discussion there okay so design sprint I put that as page two so uh, so power cube uh, once again it goes to goes to breakdown of the individual modules I know that um, people okay so let's go to power cube the page called power cube version 17.08 on the wiki which I just pasted into the chat so that's where we were um, we've got some of the parts already uh, I was actually doing the new bill of materials and uh, I was looking into the hy hydraulics design and so forth but we've got this nice frame that we um, we got uh, that's largely done we need just a few more details on there but uh, if you look into this document I was trying to yeah, doing a visual bill of materials for so basically reconciling the whole bill of materials here on page well on the bill of materials section here in PowerCube version 17.08 uh, reconciling that with the uh, visual bill of materials and then getting all the modules so so let's continue working on all the modules the modular breakdown like we did uh, last time we had in this working document from that was August 5th yeah so that was the weekend before uh, before this last one and we allocated the different tasks to different people already um, so that working document reflects a lot of what has been done we can continue within that document and start going to where uh, the missing pieces are as far as breakdown of the CAD into the different modules and here we got the parts library we're just filling in part by part that's really good um, as far as the progress on that if we get the torch table running by this weekend there's a chance we can actually start cutting this otherwise we'll probably end up cutting the steel by hand which is you know it's not you know you can absolutely do it but it's just gonna take uh, the frame cutting may take more like uh, you know three hours four hours as opposed to maybe one hour or something uh, and it's a relatively simple shape, so by hand that you're not, you know, it's probably four times as slow as using a torch table. Um, but yeah, we can do that w within the workshop setting. We can have a couple of people on the torches, like two or three people torching out the parts and other people drilling out the holes. So we can, we can manage without CNC. Uh, but to, as far as the design sprint this weekend whoever is already doing parts like you were allocated in the last design sprint please continue if you haven't um, if you haven't finished your part meaning up to doing the CAD file the simplified CAD file and then uploaded and then placed into this part library here uh, so like I know we have the fan we've got the the cooler or the filter rather I know those are around so we can add them to the part library which uh, which is here now uh, just one note on this if you look at the bill of materials I actually sourced a two-stage log splitter kind of a pump which means that it has a fast it, it switches between high pressure and low pressure low pressure means faster speed which this works for the brick press but this would not work for the tractor so this is a special case um, we really have two versions and they're somewhat interchangeable but you can put on a pump into this this power cube that we're building right now we can put in the two-stage pump or the regular pump that we we're actually sourcing before like like when we started last uh, last week on a design sprint we were just working with the regular one stage pump this one here so that's valid that's what we will use whenever we're doing things that have hydraulic motors as opposed to hydraulic cylinders um, you can't have a two-stage pump when you have a tractor wheel drive because it might go slow or fast 
uncontrollably. You wanna but applications like log splitters, presses like the brick press, the two stage pump works. So that's the only change. But that's an another module that we can add to the uh, design sprint. And uh, if we can focus on getting the CAD knocked out during this design sprint, that would be excellent. So I'll go back into this design sprint document and break down the work more into individual parts, get more specific on the things that we are using. The main thing right now is, I mean, the big question is, okay, we've got the engine, which is such and such size. We really need to determine whether that with the the pump fit in it simply fits within this this frame that we have if not we're simply gonna have to increase the sizes by a few inches or whatever it takes to fit that in and the engine I think Joseph was tasked with that I know that's a hard part he did I don't know how far he got on it but the engine has a basically a pump mount and a pump so that ends up being quite long in the direction of the shaft uh, because you've got this pump mount that sticks out quite a bit and then the pump that sticks out even further so it's gonna be like you need about twice as much as the engine width here you need to to fit the pump and you know one option in the simple power cube for the brick press is that the pump actually sticks out of the frame though that's not particularly desirable for the tractor because something could hit the pump and and damage it that's why you want everything contained within the frame not sticking out but uh, that's 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 that so let's do that so design sprint let's let's call it out for Saturday that's gonna be uh, August 19 Saturday August 19 and the workshop itself is on Friday August the 25th and that's going to be good. We've got the updated guides for the drawer. We did the whole redesign. It was a great job by the whole team. Um, that That's pretty much done. The parts are out for cutting. or They're being cut right now. Um, and then there's the controller, which we have pretty much under control. So, um, so noontime, let's do noon to four. And let's try to... Main goal is... Uh, finish CAD and then after that CAD finishing the CAD means then just really start on getting the overall assembly finish CAD plus assembly full assembly and we're demonstrating that it actually works really well like we are able to work effectively in parallel and um, I think these tool chains that we're developing are, are really working nicely that I think we can definitely scale this to many, many more people working together. So there's definitely in some initial encouraging results. Okay, so with that said, who can show up on um, on Saturday at noontime? Who can we expect there? And what can we allocate as far as all the parts? Because we can get very explicit on that. Actually, 4 p.m. is not a liquor. Here, it will be the truck at night. Uh, say it again. Actually, four o'clock is too late for me. Actually, it would be like uh, like uh, twelve o'clock. Yeah. Um, can you make it for the initial part of that, like the start of that, or? Uh, from twelve to four p.m. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Okay, that would be good. So you can uh, probably make at least the first first half. Um, yeah, noon time. Does noontime work, or do people want to do it a little earlier? Let's talk about that. Okay, but let's let's see who we can line up and to what parts. So, uh, so Abe, I know Abe was doing a pump. So we have. Um, let's see, Josh, uh, Will. Josh was doing the. Um, what were you doing there, Josh? Um, I O coupler. So I know I was doing the coupler. 
so we can continue that there's one version of the coupler and then someone else there's a coupler too also a different there's two versions of the coupler that we want to use one I mean there's two pumps pump sets that we want to use one is a two-stage pump and one is the regular pump so Uh, Joseph was, I know he was doing the the engine, but he needs some help on that. Can you guys type in a text or let me know if you're available and what part, like, maybe the assignment, you can take on some of the parts uh, as we go to this. I think Roberto is going to be tasked up, so maybe Roberto is taken care of here. Um... Let's see, Dixon I know, so Dixon was there at the at the build, so he's doing a, a nice promotional video, so maybe we just let him do that. Um, there's Michael, Michael's d working on the back end of the internet, but then there's Michel, uh, who we're adding, but he has to still do the test. So... Uh, Christian, we're going to task with the ISO. That's a critical one. So we're going to talk to Christian about the ISO. And he's already helping Michael on a server. Let me actually paste that in here so we, we're clear on the division. So Dixon, definitely. Can you guys uh, get into this page and, and put your name by whatever you can do? Uh, Dixon is doing the promo video for the 3D printer. Roberto, we got. We're gonna have him do the FreeCAD workflow, FreeCAD assembly instructional. Ahmed, we did the, you were working on a frame, next steps on a frame, I don't know, uh, maybe, Ahmed, what do you think you, you'd like to do on that? And let's, let's actually get, get more specific on the, on the breakdown of the power cube. So, uh, one, let me see, maybe do... So fan cooler assembly. So there's assemblies that are needed. So fan cooler. There's the return line filter. There's um, suction line to, to pump. There's engine mounting. I mean, there's the pump itself, which, I mean, I think that's, I'm going to make these smaller here. So pump, the little individual parts. So there's pump, there's, well, frame is a big one. Frame, frame has a bunch of details to finish up on. Frame.
So let's go let's go through this just a little bit so so going into this meeting we're a little better. So the question is where the, each part starts and finishes. That's that's like one of the main questions we ask when we do the modular breakdown. I mean there's coupler, there's um what else we got? There's fan mounting, which is basically this grate. Uh, I'll talk more about those individual ones. What else we got? So engine mounting, there's pump, coupler, engine mount to frame. Yeah. When you look at the power cube, what else are we missing? So frame, control panel, key switch, return line, suction line. Yeah, I mean, I think we've caught pretty much all the parts here. Anything missing? But for this, we can actually do the pump one and pump two. We can say there's the there's engine mounting and then there you can say pump to engine mounting, that's like an assembly. Pump to engine. So for the pumps we can go with pump one mounting and pump two mounting. Like a yeah, so there's individual ones here. What I need to do is do a better detailed diagram to basically outline very carefully where one thing begins and where the next thing uh, stops. I'll work on that today and prepare that. So maybe after today uh, I can email out to assign some of these more carefully but for now we do have some of the assignments like um, let's see I think Oliver might be out of control there <laughs> doing other stuff let's see Oliver are you on the meeting here or no I don't see you Uh, Josh, so Josh, you have more work to do, right, on the on what you were doing before. Josh, if you can pipe in. Yeah, some of these are pretty much lined up here. Yeah, Josh. Yeah, uh, I hadn't gotten any work assigned for the power cube yet. Uh, you were there on the last last meeting there, right? Um, yeah, I jumped in and I didn't get any. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's have you do. So you're definitely available to, okay, so I'm going to put a question mark. I'm, I'm going to actually think about this, doing that. Uh, Joseph, I know he needs some help on um, engine. Ahmed, any thoughts on what you want to continue on? Uh, there's the frame that you're, I mean, I think continue on the frame. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll like get you some more notes on that. The fan, let's see, Alejandro, are you on here? No. No. 
Uh, Jose, how about yourself? Do you want to jump on anything? So I know this was the plan. We had Alejandro on the fan. Josh, we need somebody. Emmanuel, I think he's. Emmanuel might be working on. Uh, yeah, Emmanuel's taken up on a torch table, so don't bother him. Uh, Sarah, uh, we need to touch in with Sarah on a Saudi 3D printer workshop and all that. I gotta follow up on that. So. See, definite questions are. Io, how far are you on the coupler? I know. Um, are you pretty much done on that, or is there more work? The, yeah. Io, can you respond on that? Is Io here? Um, yep. Hi, I'm here. Yep. Um, I. From from the design sprints, I think I I made um, three three different um, components for the coupler, or three different types of the coupler. Okay. Um, so I have been out of touch for a while, so I don't know if I was expected to put those together into an assembly or right. something. But three different components were done. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So we'll. Uh... So you're available, uh, let's assume Alejandro is available, and Abe, Joseph, Antonio, haven't heard from him, Israel, don't know, haven't heard about it. Uh, Jose, are you available to do some work um, for this Saturday so I can get you going on that? And Michelle's going for WebGL, that's good. Yeah, 3D printer or cube, yeah, excellent. Um, Jose, uh, you want to feed into this? And I know we got to do the website stuff, I just... Uh... Yeah, I, I'm uh, Marsha, yeah, I can jump in uh, uh, on Okay. I'm also, I'm also, I'm also working by, uh, on my free time with the JavaScript and uh, testing things with 3D, the library for 3D with DL. Because uh, I was trying to make the model, uh, yep. to render models on the web, not depending on Facebook. But I don't know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how, what, what's the plan with uh, Michelle. And okay. With yeah, so you definitely want to connect up to Michelle. He's the master of WebGL. I think actually he's doing the most, uh, I think in the world, like the most open source relevant work on WebGL. He's the, the master of that. Oh, okay. So. Definitely, we right. want to connect, and um, yeah. so we'll connect you up. And all right, all right. and if possible, I'll still ass try to assign you a task. But we've got six people that are assignable. Uh, really, Ahmed, yeah. seven person, Will and Israel. Can I still assign you something on uh, on a design sprint? Yeah, for me, yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit lost, so... Uh, yeah. What I'll do is I'll have to clarify some of the interfaces and how things work together, which is what I'm working on right now. So uh, we'll do that and see if we can make it more clear for people. Because we've got some of the parts built, and now it's really, okay, how do they fit together? And I have a lot of... I mean, I, I know the full insight on that, and I just need to communicate that a little more. So draw out some, a few more simple diagrams. But we do have, looks like, three, six, nine, ten people potentially available for the Saturday, if possible. Um, for me, if it, if, it, if it can be a little bit uh, earlier, I don't know, because uh, here it's really like 9, so if I uh, Saturday 9. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, but I cannot just, just so you, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll see if, yeah, we kind of got to do it at noon. I, I've got some other things yeah, uh, on Saturday. All right. So okay, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. So so my next next task is to define the power cube a little bit in, as far as how the modules are broken apart, and um, we'll do that. So altogether, this is good. So we've got a team going. So Michelle, 
Jose will work on the WebGL stuff. Christian, we're going to get on the ISO. Michael is definitely busy on the server. Emmanuel's doing the torch table, uh, which is very important because once we get the torch table going, I mean, we can um, be much more close to the rapid prototyping, just, just really rap more rapid turnaround on all these designs here. Like, you know, we have the, literally, you, have, you can have a design sprint. The next day we can cut the parts and, you know, for the next meeting we say, oh, okay, this is what we did. So, so the velocity and the results will become much more transparent and visible and rapid. So that's going to be very important. And Roberto's going to help us on uh, assembly instructionals. Oliver is was helping out on a torch table height controller, which is good. Uh, so yeah, this is this is good. And then we're going to try to allocate the different tasks for the design sprint, and I'll work on a power cube here, which should be a nice event. Uh, what's happening with the power cube? It's actually definitely getting much more simple. Like I, I think the 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 four by four inch frame, it's definitely more heavy duty, more complex. But now we're just stripping it down to very very basics, uh, just refining the design to more simplicity, which is good. Uh, so I feel good about that. Okay, so that's I think that's that about covers it. Uh, let's see. There's is there any few questions? Any questions at the very end th that we didn't address? Um, GitHub stuff, Roberto. Um, Roberto, put that into your instructional or proposed workflow that we can approve as an official OSC protocol. So let's do that. The same version of FreeCAD is going to get addressed by the ISO. We got to do that. It should be really it should be easy like every one of us should have the USB stick and just plug it in on demand if, if they need it and it'll take like a minute to get it booted up then we can actually work on the same stuff um, yeah yeah definitely more instructional so that is Roberto's gonna help on this immediately and we we have to continue just pub publishing just little hints on all the software so combining the both the ISO and, and software instructionals will be a great thing Okay, anything else that we need to cover? Otherwise, we're pretty much um, ready to go. And Ahmed, you're saying you can start from 10 a.m., so we'll make sure that uh, we'll get you fed with uh, the updated information on the design of the power cube, and um, so you can get going before we get started. Okay, so this is good. Great, guys. So thanks, everybody. We're... Um, to sum up here, we're rocking and rolling. We're definitely improving our uh, effort. Uh, I think things are getting better and better. We're learning all the tools and teaching each other, so that I think this is pretty good. So if you haven't uh, filled your timesheet, please do so right after the meeting. And uh, we'll see you then during the design sprint at noontime on Saturday. And otherwise, I'll, I'll send an update email with all the task assignments. Thanks a lot, everybody, and take care. And last thing, I'm, uh, I'll quit the recording right here.